In this video, we'll be going over the derivation of the Coriolis and centrifugal accelerations of the vector calculus by first taking the derivative of position in a rotating frame versus time, where because the unit vectors that describe the position are themselves rotating, we must use the derivative product rule to determine the full derivative from the perspective of the rotating frame. Next, we're going to take the second derivative, from which we'll see where the Coriolis and centrifugal accelerations come from. And finally, we'll go over a quick sneak peek of the next video, which will be how to apply these equations of motion to the circular restricted three-body problem in astrodynamics, where we solve second-order differential equations modeled in a rotating frame to propagate trajectories. So if you've never derived these equations yourself, I highly recommend you to watch this video once, then go on pen and paper and go through the derivation by yourself by hand and use this video as a guide only if you get stuck. You're going to end up understanding this problem a lot better than only watching the video and derivatives and rotating reference frames are a very important concept to fully understand since it is fundamental to the three body problem and rigid body dynamics which corresponds to spacecraft attitude control. We'll start by defining our scenario where we have an inertial frame in white with unit vectors xi and yi, a rotating reference frame in red with some angular velocity omega, and a position vector in magenta. And even though this diagram is in two dimensions, we will be going over the equations in three dimensions and everything will still apply to this scenario. In this case, we're going to choose to describe the position vector with coordinates of the rotating reference frame, which we can denote here as Rx in the direction of x hat rotating, Ry in y hat, and Rz in z hat. And as a reminder, this is the derivative product rule, where the derivative of a times b is a times the derivative of b plus the derivative of a times b. Normally, when we take derivatives with respect to inertial frames, where the unit vectors are stationary, this is what the derivative would look like, where we just have the derivative of each component, where here the derivative of position is velocity. Because the unit vectors are constant in the inertial frame, we ignore the first component of the product rule, since the derivative of the unit vector is zero. But in the case of the rotating reference frames, the unit vectors are themselves changing, so we must take those derivatives into account. So in the next slide, we'll be going to focus on just this term in the green box. Here we have the same expression in the green box, and we're going to figure out how to calculate the derivatives of the unit vector, starting by analyzing how the x unit vector is changing. So in the diagram, the rotating reference frame is rotating counterclockwise, so at this exact moment, the change in x is perpendicular to the x unit vector in this direction. The magnitude of the velocity of the x unit vector is omega times r, and this is just an equation of circular motion, but actually this equation reduces down to just v equals omega because the magnitude of the x hat r is equal to 1 since it's a unit vector. And in this case, its direction is in the rotating y hat r direction. So from this, we can conclude that the derivative of the x unit vector is equal to omega in the y hat r direction, since again, the magnitude of the x hat vector is 1. However, we want this equation to be more general so it can apply no matter which direction the angular velocity is pointed in. So instead, we generalize by saying that the derivative of x hat r with respect to time is equal to omega cross x hat r. And you can verify that this is true by using the right hand rule. We'll add the omega cross x hat r to our new expression here. And now we move on to the derivative of the y unit vector. Again, applying the right hand rule, we see that the derivative is omega cross y hat and same for the z direction. In this case, the derivative of z is zero since z hat and omega are parallel, but we'll keep the expression in here for the general case. Now we're gonna factor out the omega cross term from this expression and what we have left inside the parentheses should look familiar since it's simply the position vector and the rotating reference frame coordinates, which takes us to our generalized form of the derivatives of the unit vectors, which is omega cross r. Now we go back to our full equation and we can plug in our generalized form of the green box term omega cross r and our velocity vector to get the final form of the derivative of the r vector with respect to time in the rotating frame, which is equal to the velocity as is seen in the rotating frame plus the omega cross r term that accounts for the rotation of the frame. So now that we have the first derivative down, we can move on to the second derivative. And we start by taking the derivative of both sides of this equation. So we have that the second derivative is equal to the derivative of the velocity as it's seen in the rotating frame, plus the derivative of the omega cross r term. We start with derivative of velocity, where it is equivalent to the first derivative that we did, except we replace the position with a velocity vector. So it's equal to the acceleration as is seen in the rotating frame, plus omega cross v. 
Now we move on to the omega cross R term where we'll be using the product rule. So starting with the first term, we have omega cross the derivative of R, but we actually already know the derivative of R is what we already did in the previous step. So we can plug that straight into here. And for the second term, we need the derivative of angular velocity, which is angular acceleration, which we'll call alpha cross with a position vector. In this case, we're going to assume the angular velocity vector to be constant, so alpha will be zero. And now we can distribute this omega cross term into the parentheses, which will give us omega cross v plus omega cross omega cross r. And this gets us into our final form, where those two omega cross v terms get grouped together to form the Coriolis acceleration, and omega cross omega cross r is a centrifugal acceleration. So this equation states that the second derivative of position as is seen in the rotating frame is equal to the acceleration as is seen in the rotating frame plus Coriolis plus centrifugal to account for the fact that the frame is rotating. And here it's important to note when each term is equal to zero, the Coriolis acceleration would be zero if the object has no velocity with respect to the rotating frame or if that velocity were parallel to the angular velocity vector and the centrifugal acceleration would be zero if the position of the object were zero, meaning it's at the center of the rotating frame or if the position is parallel to the axis of rotation omega. In the next video, we will apply the second derivative equation to the circular restricted three-body problem where we set up the rotating reference frame such that its angular velocity is only in the z direction, no angular acceleration, which reduces the second derivative equation to this vector here, and then we apply that with the acceleration due to gravity equations and a pseudo-potential function, capital omega, here to get our second order differential equations from which we can propagate trajectories. So that's it for this video. Let me know if there's any questions or comments about this one and be sure to hit like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the new videos and I'll see you in the next one.